Community policing is a philosophy and approach to the delivery of police services that has two basic components, community partnerships and problem solving. This video focuses on the first two stages of the SARA model of problem solving in the context of community policing. These guys are hanging out near my store all the time. I'm tired of the noise, and I'm gonna call the cops. My flowers are trampled again. Look at that trash, and those cigarette butts. I'd better call the police about this. That group of teenagers is hanging out in the park again. I'd rather not bring my kids in if they're there. You'd think the police would do something about that. How many times has this happened in your neighborhood? Do you have the tools to solve these problems? How can you get started? I'm John Lee, and I'm gonna be guiding you through a review of the first two stages of the SARA problem-solving model that's designed to solve problems just like this. Let's get started with the first stage of SARA, scanning. The purpose of scanning is to clearly and specifically identify problems in your neighborhood or patrol area. To understand the full range of community problems, start by creating a laundry list of problems based on things that you've observed, calls for service, and by talking to residents of the community. Chalk drawings. Graffiti. Kids hanging out at the park. Potholes. Fires in the dumpster. Letter. Yard damage. Abandoned cars. Street lights out and signs pulled up. Because we can't possibly address all of these issues at once, we have to start scratching some of the problems off our list. We can start by eliminating those concerns that don't meet our definition of a problem. Remember, a problem is defined as two or more incidents, similar in nature, capable of causing harm, and that the public expects the police to do something about. For example, the sidewalk chalk drawings are clearly not harming anyone. The dumpster fire was a single event, and the potholes in the street are not something that the police are expected to resolve. We're left with a list of problems that needs to be prioritized. There are several ways to prioritize. For example, you could pick the one that would be easiest to solve, or you could pick the one that's quickest to solve, or as we've done, you can pick the problem that seems to be at the core of other community problems. We prioritize the park disturbance because it seems to be related to the problems of graffiti, litter, and yard damage. Now let's get specific. Who's causing the disturbance? What are they doing that's a problem? Where's it happening and when? Let's go out and talk to the community. They traipse through my yard on their way to and from the park. Say, starting at four in the afternoon and going till midnight at least, mostly Friday and Saturday night. Yeah, they're here most weekends. They start meeting their buddies outside my store. I figure they get their booze and stogies next door. And they play their music so loud I can hardly hear my customers. 
Whenever they're there, I don't feel comfortable letting my kids use the playground. It's not safe to let them near those teenagers. We've dispatched 10 cars to the same location in the last three months. The complaints are of noise and trash mostly, and some neighbors report seeing pot and alcohol. So what specifics did we learn? The disturbance in the park is common on the weekends. The people involved make a lot of noise, they drink beer, smoke pot, and make a big mess on the way to and from the park. The residents are also afraid to use the park, and they're frightened by the presence of these kids in their neighborhood. In the last step of scanning, decide how you're going to gather data for the analysis phase. Now remember, members of the community can help you. First, I'll check with crime stats and get the number of calls we've had at this location. I'll also check with the research section to see if the survey's been done. Then I'll interview teenagers in the park and others in the community to get their perspectives. Well, I'm going to record how often they come through my yard and what they're doing while they're at the park. Yeah. I can watch where they go on the way to the park, and, well, that'll confirm where they get their booze if it's next door. We can keep an eye out to see which kids are hanging out most often. I'll give the community residents about two weeks to get the information, and then I'll check back with them. Now we're finished with scanning. Before we move on to analysis, let's take a quick review of what we've done thus far. In step one, we created a laundry list of all the problems, issues, and concerns in the neighborhood. Step two narrowed the list to those things that meet our definition of a problem in problem-oriented policing. In step three, we prioritized one problem to concentrate on. And step four, we decided how and when to collect the data. Problem solving is like a funnel. In step one of scanning, we were very broad, considering many things. Now we're at the end of scanning, and we're moving down the funnel. We have one specific problem at one specific location involving some specific people. Now it's time to move on to analysis and gather more information about our problem. The next stage in the SARA model is analysis. The purpose of analysis is to identify the causes of the problem selected in scanning. Why is it happening? And why is it happening here? To get started, Gather as much information as you can on what's happening before, during, and after the park disturbances. Let's talk to the people in our neighborhood. Here comes those same kids again. It's like clockwork, buying the beer and hanging around in the gang. It's Friday, it's after school, and they're headed straight for the park. Well, when they first get there, it clears out pretty quickly. It starts out with music and beer. Soon it's pot and who knows what else. It's dark enough over there to hide an elephant. Late in the evening, I hear them walking down the street, and I've seen them cutting across my yard. While this information is helpful, it may not reflect the whole picture. You may also need to check with some additional sources of information. For example, the local high school and others in your own department might have some insights. We had some after-school programs during the week until 4 p.m. Until then, the kids can use the gym, the library, we don't do anything on the weekends. I've been seeing the same names come up on the field interrogation report, and it looks like a couple of kids are on probation. Our survey of the neighborhood showed some fear among park area residents and some dissatisfaction with police response. The picture's beginning to form about what's going on in and around the park. Next, we want to understand who's being harmed by this activity. Our community members sum it up nicely. My business is off 30% since these kids have showed up. I want some action. The cops have done nothing. I can't stand the trash and the damage to my garden, and are afraid to go out at night, certainly not for a walk in the park. I worry about what this is doing to our kids. They can't use the park, and they see everyone else afraid to go there. This group is having a pretty bad influence on the younger kids at the high school, giving them every opportunity to mess up. There is clearly a direct impact on the people who live and work in the neighborhood. What's more, there don't seem to be any negative consequences for the teens partying in the park. All they get is fun. Next, we need to get a better understanding of the problem's strength. For example, how often does it occur? They're out there every weekend night. How long has it been going on? Well, they've been coming around for about six months, ever since the rec center closed. You know, when the money dried up. How long does each incident last? I've seen them there for hours at a time. This information will help to determine the type of response to select. 
For example, if the event took only seconds to occur, such as with a purse snatch, the response would not include directed patrol. The officers would never see the event. So based on what we've learned, why is this problem happening? Listen to what the community said. It's dark over there. No one's told them to stop. The kids have nowhere else to go. They're getting the alcohol right next door. To sum up, the park is an attractive place for this group to hang out and have fun. It's dark and secluded, the neighborhood's left them alone, and alcohol is easily available. The next step is to set a realistic goal, one that can be accomplished. There are a variety of goals that can be considered. What does the community want? I want to be able to use the park again. I want to be able to plant my garden without worry. I don't want those kids hanging out in front of my store and bothering my customers. It may seem that the goals are different, but everyone's essentially saying the same thing. They want to reduce the harms they're feeling. These kids have got to go or change their behavior. Now let's just quickly list some of the resources that might be available to help us solve this problem. For example, the Park Service can help with lighting and other environmental issues in the park. A business Owners Association or religious groups could raise funds and donate materials. Schools can contribute facilities and community members can get involved. Before we get into response, we need to find out what's already been done to address this problem. I talked to some of the kids and even brought one or two in on minor stuff. Underage drinking and smoking fodder against the law, but you can't arrest them every weekend. So the officer has tried a traditional police response. Does it seem to be working? It's as bad as it was three months ago when I first started calling the cops. Well, I've seen some cops out there and the kids disappear for a couple of days, but then they come right back. This is a lesson we need for the response stage. It looks like we need to move away from traditional police responses. Now, let's review what we did in analysis. In step one, we looked at what was going on before, during, and after the problem. In step two, we estimated problem strength. In step three, we generated a hypothesis about what was causing this problem to occur. And finally, in step four, we set a goal, identified some resources to help with the response, and reviewed what had already been done to address this problem. Now that we've got all of our analysis information, it's time to move on to the response stage. If you're having trouble with these first two stages of problem solving, check and see if you've fallen into one of the following common traps. You haven't considered problems that are of concern to the community. It's common for officers to concentrate only on crime problems in the early stages of scanning. This excludes the real and often very different concerns of the neighborhood residents. Tip, go back and include residents' concerns on your list. You may need to get out in the community and knock on some doors to find out what's going on. You haven't identified a problem, you've identified an incident. In problem-oriented policing, officers concentrate on things that happen repeatedly. Incidents occur only once or are unrelated. Incidents are not the basis of problem solving. Tip. Commit to memory the definition of a problem. Two or more incidents, similar in nature, capable of causing harm, and that the public expects the police to do something about. You haven't gotten specific enough about the problem. Officers sometimes stop short of describing the problem in terms of specific behaviors. Make sure you've collected information about the who, what, where, when, and why of the problem. Tip. You know you have enough information when you can describe the problem in enough detail so that a stranger could go to the scene and observe the problem exactly as you see it. You haven't collected information from enough people and or you didn't follow up with them. Talking with community residents and business owners can be time consuming and awkward for some officers. This may cause them to stop collecting scanning information before they've properly identified the problem. Tip. Time spent now in scanning will mean less time spent later on. Use the community as a resource to collect information. Make sure to set deadlines and opportunities for follow-up. You don't do a thorough analysis. The analysis stage is the thoughtful stage. It's not full of action and may be boring for some. It's critical to a successful outcome, however, to understand the reasons that the problem's occurring. Tip. 
If you cannot come up with an explanation at the end of analysis, you probably don't really understand why the problem's occurring. Gather some more analysis information using the community and other government agencies as a resource. You identify before, during, and after conditions that are too far removed from the problem or too general. For example, in our neighborhood, we could have said that the kids were hanging out at the park because they had no respect for adults. While this may be a condition of youths in general, it's not specific to our problem. Tip, look for conditions that are close in time and space to the problem behaviors. Your explanation is too simple. In general, if you've developed an explanation that seems too simple, it probably is. Community problems are usually complex. In our example, it would be too easy to say that it's just a matter of poor lighting. Tip, don't try to identify one main reason for the problem. It may be a combination of several. You set an unrealistic goal. It may seem desirable to set a goal of eliminating the problem altogether, but this may set you and the community up for failure and frustration. Tip, set goals to reduce problems and improve conditions. By setting realistic goals, you stand a better chance of succeeding. This video reviewed the first two stages of the SARA problem-solving model. We talked about scanning for community problems and analyzing their causes. The next video will review the response and assessment stages.